And now we come to the first episode where Apple Bloom is the main focus. She had her moments in the spotlight during bridal gossip, but here is where we start to see some of her fears and worries. Not to mention we also get some clarity about cutie marks, as well as how they affect the life of a pony. As the episode begins, we get our first glimpse of school in Equestria. Miss Cherilee is teaching her class about cutie marks and starts with a story about how she got her own cutie mark. She states that she woke up one day and her cutie mark had appeared. Now, this raises an interesting question because I thought that a cutie mark would appear when a pony discovers their special talent. Now, unless Miss Cherilee was dreaming about what she would be best at in life, I find it rather puzzling just how she would have woken up with one. Even at this early point in the show, Miss Cherilee is telling her students that discovering what makes you unique isn't something that happens overnight. No amount of hoping, wishing, or begging will make a cutie mark appear before its time. Apple Bloom is actually trying to take notes here, and considering the message that is being taught, she really should be taking it to heart, as this sort of lesson just doesn't seem to stick very well with Apple Bloom. But given the actions of both Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, it's easy to understand why this is such a sensitive subject. Even in their very first appearance, both Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are showing just how shallow they are. Each time we see them, they want to cause trouble for others by rubbing in their cutie marks, their status of being part of a rich family, or abusing a position of power. The writers really haven't given us much to go on with these characters. Similar to how Snips and Snails never seem to be much more than bumbling minions, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon don't ever seem to be much more than a foil for the CMC. I can only hope that the writers will give more to their personalities in the future. The more that these two characters are cast as bullies, the more that the audience will become annoyed with their appearances. Apple Bloom goes off to chat with Applejack and starts talking about how she doesn't want to wait for her cutie mark. I want one right now. This kind of phrase will become a staple for Apple Bloom's character. Applejack mentions that she was the last pony in her class to get a cutie mark, and that Granny Smith was the last in her class too, along with Big Macintosh as well. Seems that this kind of thing runs in the family. I have to wonder if any other members of the Apple family aside from Apple Bloom had spent their youth saying that same phrase. I want it now! But considering the fact that everyone else in her family have cutie marks that have to do with apples, Apple Bloom wants to see if her cutie mark will be about apples as well. So we see Apple Bloom attempting to be a sales pony, doing her utmost to sell apples while being rather adorable at the same time but her methods are a little overbearing for the citizens of Ponyville, even to the point of attempting to fill a pony's bags and claiming that she should pay for them. Although that voice here, I didn't put those in my bag. Really, were they just trying to make that sound unrealistic? But then again, this same pony has had several different kinds of voices throughout the series, so maybe it really is a kind of running gag. Given Apple Bloom's behavior, it is understandable that Applejack is being firm with her. Though I gotta admit, it seems odd to see Applejack acting like this. She's usually so calm and collected. But I suppose it really does seem like Applejack takes so much responsibility on herself in regards to Apple Bloom. And Applejack is even trying to help Apple Bloom to feel better by finding others in her class that also don't have a cutie mark yet. So it shows a bit more wisdom to Applejack's character when she can put aside her frustration and calmly suggest a way to help Apple Bloom. Of course, finding out that she really is the last one in her class without a cutie mark is really getting Apple Bloom down. Enter Rainbow Dash, who takes a far more direct approach when trying to help Apple Bloom find her cutie mark. Why wait for something to happen when you can make it happen? This can be a really confusing kind of message for a child, which makes me wonder if Apple Bloom had really taken that line to heart. We see a montage of many different activities that Apple Bloom seems less than capable of doing, all the while trying to force a cutie mark to appear. Even taking part in an ultra pony roller derby? Really? This is a thing in Equestria? I wonder how that got started. Apple Bloom is once again feeling down on herself until Pinky asks whether she would like to eat some cupcakes. Now really, what child wouldn't want to take part in eating cupcakes? We get another short song from Pinkie Pie, which is actually a little more catchy than her previous songs in the series. 
but we see that Applebloom is still not doing something that she has a natural talent for. Although seeing her put a hot pad in her mouth in order to remove the cupcakes from the oven, yikes. I have to wonder how many times Pinky has burned her mouth with all the baking she does. But considering that she just eats an overcooked cupcake less than 10 seconds after it was removed from the oven, maybe she really can't get burned anymore. When Twilight arrives at the bakery, Applebloom insists that Twilight use her magic to make a cutie mark appear. And I'm actually rather impressed with how fast Applebloom is talking here. Must have taken a lot of practice to pull off that many lines so quickly. Twilight tries to dissuade her, but Applebloom is especially insistent. So Twilight uses her magic, but each time a cutie mark appears, it just as quickly disappears. I have to wonder just what kind of spell Twilight is using here. What other uses would it have? There seems to be quite a few moments where Twilight's spells makes me rather curious about the purposes behind them. The transition of Applebloom leaving the kitchen and suddenly finding herself at the party is quite sneaky. I say job well done for the writers and animators here. A cute senora seems to be quite the event in a young pony's life. Residents from all over town are coming to take part in it. Although, perhaps this particular cute senora is so popular because Diamond Tiara went out of her way to make sure that a lot of ponies would be there. She's certainly basking in the glory of being the center of attention. Wouldn't surprise me if Diamond Tiara had gotten her father to put a lot of money into this little celebration. But then again, the fact that we don't see anyone from Diamond Tiara's family here makes me wonder if the writers really did make more to her character. If she is often neglected or even outright ignored by her family, that might explain quite a bit of her behavior. Of course, we still see Applebloom trying not to get noticed and even hiding her flank so that she might be able to make excuses. Diamond Tiara and Silverspoon are thoroughly enjoying Applebloom's lack of a cutie mark when we get our first speaking appearance of both Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. It is admirable to see the two of them standing up for Applebloom when it seems quite apparent that they were trying to hide as well. And we get a lesson here showing that not knowing what you are best at shows that you still can explore your potential. They can still look forward to the experience of learning who they are, which teaches the importance of self-discovery. Overall, I think Call of the Cutie has a few moments that drag down the rest of the episode. I can tell that some of the voices for the background ponies aren't quite up to par with the rest of the cast, which can be a little distracting. But the good moments still outweigh the mediocre moments, and I'm still finding interesting little bits that I hadn't noticed before. Like the fact that there is an oddly colored Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo in Apple Bloom's class right at the start of the episode. What do you think of Call of the Cutie? Do you think Rainbow Dash may have influenced Apple Bloom to keep on doing random activities in order to discover a cutie mark? Do you think Diamond Tiara may have some deeper issues that cause her bullying behavior? Was there anything about this episode that you hadn't noticed before? I would like to hear your thoughts about Call of the Cutie and whether you believe it made for a good intro of the CMC. I am Dr. Wolf and I look forward to hearing from you.